a young Neanderthal scout returns to camp with something strange. Not a claw, not a fang, but a feathered shaft soaked in blood. The hunters gather. They examine it, confused. It's too light to be a proper spear, too delicate to be thrown with force. Yet, it killed, cleanly, deeply. They try to replicate it, the stone flakes into useless shards. The elder watches in silence, not afraid of the weapon, but of what it means. For over 300,000 years, Neanderthals thrived across Europe and parts of Asia. They braved Ice Age winters, hunted giant beasts, and shaped stone into deadly tools. They were not brutes, they were survivors. Intelligent, resourceful, and adapted. And then, around 70,000 years ago, something changed. A new species entered the scene. Us, Homo sapiens. Our early ancestors carried with them fire, art, language, and something else. Something small, silent, and revolutionary. A weapon that could kill from a distance, cleanly, precisely, without warning. The bow and arrow. It was the great equalizer. A finely crafted stick with a sinew string and a feathered shaft tipped with flint. It allowed humans to kill prey and enemies without getting close. It reduced risk. It increased success. It changed everything. And yet, Neanderthals never used it. That's the mystery. For thousands of years, they lived alongside Homo sapiens. They interbred. They encountered each other across valleys, rivers, and hunting grounds. And they had access to the same materials. Wood, sinew, stone. But not once do we find convincing evidence that Neanderthals adopted the bow. No bows in their camps. No miniature arrow points shaped their way. No signs of the skill passed on. Just silence. This isn't just a gap in archaeology. It's a gaping question in human history. Why did one species invent a weapon that would one day conquer continents, while the other, just as capable with their hands and minds, never did. It's not that Neanderthals lacked intelligence. They crafted sophisticated tools. They built shelters, tended fires, and likely had some form of spoken language. But when it came to the bow, they never crossed that line. And this matters, because the bow was more than a weapon. It was an idea. An idea that allowed humans to hunt smaller, faster prey, to strike without warning, to protect themselves at a distance. It was an evolutionary advantage that compounded over time. And in a world of scarce resources, freezing nights, and dangerous predators. Having that kind of edge could mean survival or extinction. So we must ask, was it cultural? Was it social? Was it a case of technology denied or understanding delayed? This one weapon, simple in form, deadly in function, may have drawn the first invisible line between two human worlds, one that would thrive and one that would vanish. The mystery of the bow and the Neanderthal doesn't begin with myth. It begins in stone, small stones, shaped, sharpened, 
Feather Light. These early projectiles coincided with Homo sapiens' emergence from Africa, a period known as the Out of Africa Migration, roughly 70,000 years ago. And that migration would eventually lead into Neanderthal territory. Now fast forward to Grotmandrin, a limestone rock shelter in the Rhone Valley of France. In 2023, archaeologist Ludovic Slimak and his team made headlines with a groundbreaking study inside a layer dated to about 54,000 years ago. They found small stone points, incredibly similar to those used on arrows in South Africa. What's more, these points predated any other known Homo sapiens presence in Europe by thousands of years. The implications? That Homo sapiens were launching arrows into Europe 10,000 years earlier than previously thought, possibly even during the height of Neanderthal dominance. In the archaeological record, we call these microliths tiny, precise flint points. To the untrained eye, they look unimpressive, perhaps even like broken tools. But in context, they reveal something profound. The earliest firm evidence of mechanically propelled projectile weaponry, that is, bows and arrows, comes from Southern Africa at sites like Sibudu Cave, in what is now South Africa. Dated to around 64,000 to 72,000 years ago, these sites show signs of delicate, heat-treated stone tips, too small and thin to be effective on a hand-thrown spear, but perfect for an arrow. Some even show impact fractures, splinters and cracks consistent with being shot at high velocity, not stabbed or thrust, a hidden language written in stone. And yet, Neanderthal toolkits remained the same. Their stone tools, known as the Mousterian industry, were masterfully crafted. They made level wall flakes, spear points, scrapers, and knives, perfect for close-up hunting, but not for projectile use. It's not that they couldn't make fine tools, it's that they didn't make projectile tools. And we know this from fracture analysis, a kind of microscopic CSI. When a stone tip hits a target at high speed, it creates distinct breakage patterns, a telltale sign of propulsion. These patterns are consistently found in early Homo sapiens sites, but in thousands of Neanderthal sites across Europe. They're virtually absent. Even more striking is what came later in the Upper Paleolithic around 45,000 to 40,000 years ago, Europe saw the rise of advanced projectile technology. The Neronian Techno Complex centered in modern day France. These were not just arrows. They were standardized, refined, and widespread. Some researchers suggest connections between the Neronian and earlier industries like Xar Kiel in Lebanon or Grot del Cavallo in Italy. The similarities are uncanny. Small, elongated points, carefully shaped for flight. This suggests more than coincidence. It suggests a shared tradition, a knowledge network that stretched across continents, passed through generations. These weren't just lucky inventions. They were technologies, transmitted, copied, perfected. But again, only by Homo sapiens. 
Neanderthals, who lived alongside these projectile-wielding humans for thousands of years, never show clear signs of adopting this weapon. This absence becomes more and more telling the deeper we dig. It's not just what we find, it's what we don't. In a world where survival often came down to distance, stealth, and precision, the bow was the ghost in the dark, and Neanderthals were left holding spears. And so the question grows louder. Why didn't they follow? It's tempting, far too tempting, to see the Neanderthals as a failed branch a species that didn't adapt fast enough, that couldn't innovate, that simply lost to superior minds. But that's not the full story. And honestly, it's not a fair one. Neanderthals were brilliant in their own right. They survived brutal Ice Age winters, adapted to wildly shifting climates, and persisted across Eurasia for over 300,000 years. That's longer than Homo sapiens have been around. They built shelters, crafted tools with astounding precision, and hunted massive game in close combat, face to face with mammoths, aurochs, and cave bears. They created glue from birch bark, mastered fire, and possibly even sailed small distances across water. Their brains, slightly larger than ours, on average. Their tools, incredibly refined, especially the Mousterian tool set, optimized for survival and durability and their social world? Complex. Evidence from burials like Shanidar suggests care for the injured, ritual behavior, and possibly even symbolic meaning. They weren't primitive. They were different. They may not have used bows, but that doesn't mean they didn't understand technology. It may simply mean they invested their genius into another path, one that worked for hundreds of thousands of years. In the end, the story of the bow isn't about who was smarter. It's about context, culture, and chance. Neanderthals were capable of so much more than we often give them credit for. And though they vanished, their story is not a tragedy. It's a testament to a species that thrived on the edge of survival and walked the earth as our equals.